I'll do it. So um, in the first place, did I share with you how I met Dwayne? No, I don't know anything about this really. Okay, so I went to the UFO Megacon in Laughlin. I've never been to a UFO event ever. I totally believe in all of that. I love it. I'm, I study it, but I, but I'm not, I, I just have never been to one of those. It just never really occurred to me. Right. I decided to go to this one this year. I needed to go and I decided to go to a seven day as a vendor with Cogno movement. Right. Now that might seem super weird, but I thought, well, you know, they're open. People like, it doesn't seem weird to me because these are access modalities, you know, like Grant yeah. Cameron writes about. So seeing ETs, UFOs, and also experiencing quantum jumps, healing, it goes together and cognitive yeah. movement. So it fits. Yeah. And I we have become yeah. um, friendly with Barbara Lamb, who does regressions mm-hmm. for um, people who are experiencers. You know, Barbara? Not personally, but I've heard of her. <laughs> yeah. So she does regressions and... Um, we'd become friendly with her. She lives down San Diego by Bill. And I realized that um, there's a way to use Cogno movement to help experiencers who have a traumatic event. Good. So when we do, uh, you know, this work, the infinity work, uh-huh. we'll see where someone has a shaking in the eyes or the eyes stick or they don't want to go there or whatever. Right. We'll often ask, okay, just see what's here. When is it? Where is it? Just a picture, a flash. Right. And then as you move it and you find different spots where you have that uh, nystigmus or nystagmus, um, it'll often, you'll find a memory that you didn't know was there. Now, what's that word you're using? The mysticness or nystagmus? Nystagmus, nystagmus, it's just the eye shaking. And it kind of gotcha. with a lot of different um, things when the eyes glitch, basically, we call it a glitch, but they kind of go, Brr. yep. Or they will be, this is a really interesting one where they're not aligned all of a sudden on a topic. Kind of going cross eyed. Well, this eye is moving and this eye is not, or right. Sometimes it'll be like you'll, you'll be moving it and, and the eyes will go here. And here, but not right there. Okay. So we're just accessing parts of the brain, you know, just the eyes access the brain, the files in the brain. And you'll see just a flash of a picture and it'll look like unicorn, my father's mustache, a slide, right, right that pictures. And that will add up to um, a whole storyline for the person, for, for us facilitating. It's like, well, that's weird stuff, but then the person will go, oh my God, I didn't realize this is what happened or that is what happened. And we had one woman who thought her mother had never been there for her in her life. But when we did this work, I mean, she did, that's what it sounded like, you know, right? My, pet, my dog, you know, and she gasped and said, oh my God, I realized my mother was at every one of those events. Okay. She may not have been there for her emotionally, but she was literally physically there. Right. And her mom had passed, so it changed everything for her. Right. Anyway, so we realized that for some people who don't want to do regression, hypnotherapy, I'm mm-hmm. one of those people. <laughs> and what, what, what do you mean you don't want to? Like you refuse or it just doesn't feel right? No, I've done it, but I have this, so my weirdness. So somebody, <laughs> You're not weird. When I've weird. done it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> when I, I own it. When I've done uh, regressions in the past, and only a couple, I always feel like my arms and my legs are off my body, not in a painful way, just off and reversed. And the whole thing feels like a roller coaster, right? Like, you know how you get put in a roller coaster and go and they're like, Ooh. it's such an uncomfortable physical sensation for me that I really just hate it. So I don't like it either. And so it gave me this idea that for people who don't want to do that or maybe afraid, yeah, that we might be able to find the memory. Right. And when we do this work, it's very non-threatening that you just see flashes, you're not reliving. Okay. So that's a long way around why I decided to go to this event. I thought we could help people who were experiencers. Yay. So it turns out that the event had only 10% of its 
um, attend attendance, possible attendance? Only 10% in person because it was, yeah. were there people, there are probably people checking it out, you know? Nope. It, no, it wasn't live either. It was just only 10% of the people. And th there was some marketing stuff. I don't, maybe it was COVID, who knows? So it was all of us vendors and speakers standing around for seven days talking to each other. Interesting. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool, actually. We met some amazing people and the, and the people that did come were amazing. And they had amazing experience because they had one-on-one -on -one attention from all of us. So that yes. was, well, so I only got to see a few of, this, the, of the speakers because, you know, we were out doing our work, but Dwayne from Blind Frog was there. And I had no interest because I'd seen a bit of the documentary and it was about like lost treasure and gold right. stuff. This is in Utah, right? We're talking about Utah? Yep. Okay. Utah Basin, Colorado. Border. Oh, okay. Um, On the border. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's 20 miles from, uh, from um, Skinwalker. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean... Right. So this is, this is why they would go to the UFO conference, because there'd be that interest about people who'd had experiences. Well, Maybe. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, Continue. Okay, so this is it. I mean, that's why I like the fact that I told you I was skipped, totally skeptical of everything. But also, I just didn't think I had any interest. And, in, you know, I've watched the, uh, the Skinwalker one, and I'm like, eh, okay, whatever. So... My daughter had met Dwayne. She's like, oh, mom, got to meet Dwayne. He's really, really great. You know, well, I just didn't, I didn't even, I hadn't even seen him except for on a panel. I saw him talking on a panel and it was really funny because he's up there and on this panel. And I don't know if you know who Jimmy Church is, but Jimmy yeah. Church is the moderator and he's there with um, the guys from Skinwalker and they're scientists and they're all the things. And Dwayne's up there with his cowboy hat on and he's a big, tall guy, skinny guy. And he's got his knees apart and he's got the chair leaned way back on the stage, you know, <laughs> he's just sitting very nice. And they ask him a question. He's like, ah, oh, shit, I don't know. I'm just an old cowboy, like or old hillbilly. He calls himself a hillbilly. <laughs> anyway, at that point, I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy's fantastic. But he really wasn't, you know, he's not, he's not polished speaker. He's not, you could tell he was uncomfortable. And he said that. So inside the building, it's like a vortex of cell service. You cannot get a call or send one. And it, you can, every so often a text will come in, but rarely, I don't know if they've blocked signals or, or what, but. Where is this at the hotel? Or? Laughlin. Yeah. It's at the apartment okay. in Laughlin. And so the whole time I, you know, you can't get a call in or, in or out. And, and this is the last day of the event. And Bill is messaging me about something and he's driving me nuts. Whatever it was, was like, I don't know, because you couldn't communicate back and forth. It was like, you know, an hour here, an hour, you know, mm -hmm. so finally I'm like, oh, okay, I've got to call him. Yeah. Well, the other thing about this hotel is I'm completely lost. I have a great sense of direction, but inside this hotel, I could not find any, I, I had no idea where I was. And as a small hotel, <laughs> so like like, what is wrong with you? Like if you had a stroke, cause she has a terrible sense of direction. And I, <laughs> she relies on you. Yeah. I mean, she really thought it was so weird. I could not figure out where I was, like how to get anywhere. So I needed to get outside the building to make a phone call. Okay. And so I, I go out for, I have my ball in my hand, probably because I'm annoyed about whatever this phone call is, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I just happened to think this is that whole timeline circumstance, right? I have my ball in my hand. I go out and I'm just looking for daylight, just looking to get into a breezeway. And I couldn't go outside the building because it was actually 117 degrees that day. Oh my gosh. Okay. The next day it was going to be 121 degrees. It's too hot. You can just pass out heat well, stroke. Yeah. I was wearing, you know, rubber croc heels. They would have melted to the pavement. I know I <laughs> once before. <laughs> so I did. I had a half in Phoenix once before at 118. 
So all of this adds up to this very weird chance meeting. Otherwise I wouldn't tell that whole backstory, but so I finally find daylight to go out the door into a breezeway. It just so happens that the breezeway is under a portico where people drive in that have um, boats or RVs or, you know, to unpack their vehicles and to check in right before they go to some other lot to park. So there's Dwayne Ollinger, owner of Blind Frog Ranch, with his truck and his piece of equipment hooked up outside under the portico. Now, I have no idea why he walked back in the building, because as it turns out, they were telling him he needed to move that thing or they were going to tow it. But for some reason, he walks back in the building and he says to me, what the hell is the deal with that ball? So I was talking to Bill and here's the really funny and embarrassing part. I was talking to him with my phone in my bra. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. So here's this male voice coming from my bra and I'm working my ball and Dwayne walks in and it's like, what is happening with that ball? Right. Like, so I end up hanging up with Bill and talking to Dwayne and I you know, I shared about the ball and um, a little bit. And then he starts to tell me a story like I've never heard in my entire life. And I've listened to many hours of Jimmy Church and Whitley Strieber and all of, I've heard a lot of stories, but I've never heard anything like this. And I'd never heard anything from a person like him. So like I said, you know, so down to earth, yeah, yeah, Wranglers, dirty cowboy boots, not dirty, but you know, used. Yeah. Practical. Obviously he has the hat on that he wears all the time. His you know, kind of yeah. a gray style hat, but not shine and polished, you know, Wrangler jacket or jean jacket, a Levi's jacket, you know, and just the most earnest in the way he speaks. And, you know, I'm a master NLP practitioner and really one of my superpowers is this micro fine movements watching and also kind of an intuitive ability to feel a person's actual in- intention. Right. So all of my radars are on, right? Because I'm thinking, what is this thing that he's telling me? And what he starts talking about is this place and people are healing and there's this pond and there's gold suspended in the pond, which should not be possible, but it is. You mean in the water suspended? In the this water. Like, nice. Yeah. And people are coming and they're having these healings and blah, 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 blah. And they, you know, there were these satellites that helped them figure out where there might be gold or silver on the property. And they're digging one day and lightning starts to come out the ground along with a big blue um, orb or dome or light or, right? <laughs> and in this area, it's a, a, it's like, where the pond is, is 7,600 feet. So it's very high elevation. Okay. And then, you know, that's the pond. And then there's beyond that, right? So this lightning starts to come out of the ground. And in the area, there's all kinds of, in the late afternoon, there'll be standing monticular clouds. Okay. So they look like a little spaceship. Mm-hmm. You know, they're very lenticular, like a lentil. Yeah. But what they actually are is just ice flowing through, you know, a cloud. And so they, that's why they look like that. So I witnessed that the first day that we, I ended up going there, the day we went there, I saw that these, I mean, the weirdest shaped clouds I've ever seen standing lenticulars are not very strange anyway. But in the afternoon, a lot of times they're there, they kind of builds up a little of that kind of energy. And then kind of like Mount Shasta, you know, how it'll have the So he said, those were there. And all of a sudden they start to move very, very quickly, three of them and come down to where he is and the cloud evaporates and there's three ships and then there's six ships and then there's nine ships. And I'm looking at this man, this cowboy rancher 
in all the earnesty there is telling me there are th nine in three ships and six ships and nine ships, right? I'm thinking to myself, what in the hell does this have to do with gold? Like, what are we talking about here? And this is daytime? And it was recent, like a few years ago? Like, what are I think they've been on the property since like 2011 or okay. right there. so within the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. That's recent. That's pretty recent. <laughs> I don't know the actual date and I'm just retelling his story. I'm probably bought yeah. a lot of it. So but but, 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 yeah, he just walked in. You're holding your ball. He's telling you this. <laughs> yeah. He starts telling me. And I'm like, Whoa. I mean, the idea that this is someone's actual reality to me was just incredible, just incredible. <laughs> and he's funny. I mean, he's really funny. And he's telling this story like he's telling you about a baseball game, you know? Like lightning coming out of the earth. Like, wait, well, wait a minute. Lightning coming out of the earth. <laughs> Slow to <slide. Yeah. laughs> I know. Okay. Okay. So here is where it gets really, really fun. So like, like, like nine ships isn't really, really fun. And these are big ones, I guess, or I don't know. It's hard. You know, I didn't really ask that. And I'm, I don't know. I, I, I mean, if you could see the area, nine ships might be a lot if they were really big, but I don't, I don't really know. I guess I, okay. I didn't ask that part. So, okay. Anyway. So um, the ships come and he says, so I'm there and they contact me and they say, you know, we got to shut this down. You just alerted everyone in the universe of this particular location. And so he started to talk about this idea that it, this, this lightning and the blue was sending a signal literally through dimension. And they didn't necessarily want everybody to know whatever that is, is right there. Something about maybe it wasn't exactly like legal in not our government terms, but in the greater terms. So I said, hold up. What do you mean they contacted you? Like they told you, like, was it telepathic? Right, right, right. right. Was it a loudspeaker? Like, what did they say? And he goes, well, no, they called me on my cell phone. I'm like, okay, all right. Now that's a joke, right? <laughs> no, they called him on the cell phone. And I'm like, now my mind is so blown. He said, well, he said, they're about a thousand years uh, advanced of us and it's electronics. You don't think they can figure out how to make the mm -hmm. cell phone ring? I'm like, well, gosh, I guess that makes the most sense ever, really, <laughs> right? Okay. Well, he ended up having a relationship with um, actually a, a human general on this ship. And I don't know if maybe he knew this person before, but he was a retired general that became a liaison. And the group is called uh, the Galactic Federation of Hinden, I believe. I may not have that exactly correct, but it's a group that is a, a protective um they, they sort of are protecting us from ourselves and us from some others and kind of um, assisting. So, you know, there was some mention of like uh, nuclear weapons and what would happen if a nation starts proliferating them and how they play a role in all of that. But this place evidently had something to do with all of that and they shut it down. You mean the, the these beings shut it down, right? Yeah. yeah. So they they had been active, but once once this incident occurred, um, I guess the incident being Dwayne was digging, he was mining. They were digging. And, they were okay, digging. Yeah. and then they decided, okay, we can't be here anymore because there's too much digging activity, right? <laughs> no, it uh, no. I think that was just in a protective stance of whatever that they they, and that's probably my guess, and I'm guessing that's probably why they were there in the first place around that area is to monitor what was happening there because there's something below that could have been affected and it was so Dwayne and his crew where they were looking for and there it really is an aspect of lost treasure 
on, on the land. It could have been Mormon gold, Aztec gold, but it's bigger than just my, it's not about mining. And, and Duane has said that I've heard him say, this is not about mining. So it's treasure. Yeah. So he quit looking for the treasure. No, they're still looking for it. And that's what the um, documentary is about okay. discovery. I haven't, I haven't seen the documentary. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's what the Got documentary it. is about. And, and they have found some things for sure. Super interesting. So the layers of the interest of this particular place are varied and many, many. So, okay. but what, what in the end, what Dwayne and I ended up talking about is the reason that people have healings on the land. So I said, why do people have healings on the land? And he said, well, I don't know. You tell me, like, I don't know. So I said, okay, well, what happens? Tell me what happens. And that, that's when he said that there was this pond that is not a, it's not a natural pond. They were digging, trying to get into these subterranean caves right? and dug a hole and these blind frogs came out. So in the cavern below, they knew there was water, but they also knew there was no light because the, the frogs had developed without light. Thus the name blind frog ranch. But this water came out from under the ground. And the guys who've been diving in it, like Dwayne specifically, has long gray hair from about here down. When he takes off the hat, the hair is growing in dark beneath it. Wow. Yeah. Things like that. So, and then there people have come and just gotten in the water and have had miraculous healings. Like they, they can't walk. They're so crippled with arthritis and then they can get out and they're fine. So I start to ask, well, how long does it last? You know, did you right. follow up? What happened after? What else happened? Were there changes in consciousness, intelligence, like, like all, all of those things. And of course his answer is, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So I said, okay, I have an idea, you know, in our work, we work with the nervous system. And when we delete something or remove something or unblock something from the nervous system, we measure with the BioWell machine. I don't know if you're familiar, but it's this little machine that actually measures the output of the, of electricity from the body. So voltage. And so we can see, okay. You started here and we do the thing, you know, remove the thing. You, you have a session, let's say, and your voltage jumps. Right. And then what happens in your life jumps. So we'll see changes in consciousness as well. Meaning awarenesses, the ability to shift perspective, the ability to shift timelines. The, yes. <laughs> we see timelines shift. We, right. So, but my fascination is that voltage jump. So we can see the energy was released at least from the body, right? but returned to the pool of overall energy of the body. Right. So Dr. Jerry Tennant talks about, you know, if you're somewhere in the voltage of 50, that's kind of a healthy and then, you know, anywhere above that. So we, when we measure people, we see them in the fifties. We've always been in the mid, mid to high fifties, low sixties, right? Right. Bill and I, when we measure ourselves. So I said, okay, so I have this idea, Dwayne, that if there's an electrical charge in the water, and at that point, they thought it was the water that was creating the healing. Getting the dark hair, clearing up all these diseases and stuff. Yeah. And all that stuff. Yeah. And he okay. thought it was the water. It was related to the water. And it's uh -huh. just a hole in the ground. And of course, we've got these legends of Fountain of Youth and people looking for this. So yeah. It, Naturally, you think about the water. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And Duane had been told from other people that there are these places around the world that like celebrities will go to. And usually that, see, yeah, there's secret. That's something not usually spoken of. Yeah. And that this that those might on a scale of one to ten be a two or a three in, in terms of their energetic output and the ability to create change. This one's a ten. Wow. Right. Yeah. So powerful. So I said, you know, Duane, I think I just have this idea that maybe what's happening is while people are in that water, they're actually 
have some ability or the water is electrically charged enough and the body is able to access and use that charge. So a percentage more of energy than normal for their bodies. What we found is when the body, let's say has 10, point, 10 more joules, you start at 50, you end at 60, that now the body will take that extra energy and use it for things like healing. And that makes sense about making a quantum jump to another time curve, timeline reality, because when you got that little jolt of energy, that's what it, you need to kind of make that jump. And sometimes people feel it. You'll see animals kind of shudder if they're in a life or death situation, and then they can heal from something that looks like it could have killed them. So a lot of um, people who are naturalists have observed this, and people who have gone through emergency situations have felt it too. Okay, I just want to, those are thoughts that are occurring. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am really glad for that input because that, that makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. And then there's other places on the planet where people go and they, they heal, right? right? Like Lourdes, like yeah. you go to a sacred, yeah. blessed place where it's, it's got tremendous uh, sacred wow. love and divine energy. Yeah. Or even just any vacation mm -hmm. where your body doesn't have to utilize its natural energy on the daily stresses of life, right? And you're, and you're feeling open to receiving because sometimes yeah. when you're on vacation, you, hopefully you're in a good place. Hopefully you're yeah. feeling relaxed and then you can feel the energy of the earth. Just like I've, I've felt that lying on the beach along the California coast or Oregon coast and just being in the sand and just feeling like, wow. And it's amazing. The energy just comes through so beautiful. Absolutely. That's just it. So in our work, especially my particular fascination is that, that all of a sudden you have this extra amount of energy. So let's say you have 50 joules and of those 50 joules, 49 of them are being used for your heart and lungs and liver and kidneys and all of the problems that your body's trying to keep you safe from. Right. And yes. so maybe you have one joule left over where their body's like, ah, maybe I could heal that freckle on your you know, right here, but I don't have any more than that. Right. So when you're relaxed or you have, you know, you do a session with a practitioner like us and you end up with a more energy, then your body naturally will use that energy to heal. So this was my idea. And I said to Dwayne, maybe that's what's going on. And we have this piece of equipment and maybe we could bring it and test. And this equipment, I, I saw, I, I peeked, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I peeked at parts of the video you did with Bill. And I love the way the machine shows alignment of the chakras. That's another huge key to quantum jumping. When you're aligned, you're going to be jumping better. So I'm sorry to just interject, but yeah. That's fascinating. Okay. Yes. So, and also the machine does balance the, of the organs, you okay. know, the both sides of the energy of organs. Um, it'll show your overall energy. It also shows your auric field. Good. It uses Kirlian photography. But what's interesting about that is you can see when these jumps of energy happen, not just an expansion of that field, because that would be one thing, right? Right. Okay, more energy. Right. But when, you know, with a session with us, what we've seen is that there might be a hole right. in that field. So in one case, there was a woman who'd fallen, broken her femur. Uh-huh. And there was actually a hole. You could see there was no energy coming out of that part. Right. When the the emotional, physiological, emotional problem of she was afraid of falling again because she'd been abused when she was healing. Right. Was mended. So 45 minutes later, that hole filled in completely. Right. Another person we saw that was had a drug problem and was really in it there that that orc field looked shattered and there were big holes and spikes and pieces where there was nothing and pieces where there was a lot so that field around is really indicative of what's going on in the health of the body right and the amount of available energy so it looks very thick and full <clears throat> and, um no holes and, and yeah no right and, and so there's a lot I do, I do that when I work with clients, I don't have the machines, but I'm doing this, the same thing, you know, just looking to see like, where's the, the, it's the same goal to get back to that pure energy flow. Um, because it seems like most of us have these, some kind of blockages and they happen so easily. It doesn't, 
require a huge trauma. Lots of little traumas can cause these no. blockages too. Yeah. yeah, I'm always <laughs> saying that. it literally can be nothing. I think I know like a paper cut or, you know, like, yeah, what, or you, a miss- misunderstanding of what you thought someone said and you took it really hard. Yeah, oh, not even that. We, we were so <laughs> who had a she looked up and saw her arch nemesis on the bus oh. and she believed at 10 years old. So it's all about brain development, physical development, right. things, a mood and emotion in that particular moment. Right. She looks up, the girl gives her one of these. <clears throat> yeah, just or a look. Not, or not. She could have been constipated. We don't even know. Yeah. But that person's physical body took on an injury that lasted her whole lifetime of not being able to be loved, even by God. Right, right. Wow. So well, well, well sometimes these are echoes of the past. Just kind of like these are repeating patterns because... <laughs> Yeah, because that's what we're here to learn. And, you know, hopefully we can learn through so that we can have a little bump on the road of life and feel like, ah, I've learned that one. But if we haven't learned that one, then it's like, ooh, and that can get us. Yeah. Well, and also the whole setup of, of, you know, what your age is, what your development is, what was happening in the moment. What did you eat that day? You know, what did your mom just say to you? What did, what was the weather like? And then that, and then that girl gives you the thing. And that means something to the nervous system. And it creates like a trink, like a, like a chink, like a trauma, like a mark in the nervous system. And the body keeps running that because it wants to protect you from ever having that feeling again. And it gobbles up this massive amount of resource of power of energy of those jewels. Right. And so in her case, we literally found it in the spot, like right here. She's like, Oh, Oh, this girl. And she did that to me. And I felt Mm -hmm. it returned the the thing cleared. And she was to this day, it was the most impactful moment in my practitionership. Mm -hmm. It literally looked like she lit from the inside. Yeah. You know, and and being able to see or feels a little bit and feel them more myself. It was literally like a blast of power that that little chink in her armor was pulled out Mm -hmm. and she, for the first time in what she could remember in her whole life, felt what it would feel like to, to possibly be loved by even God. Amazing. But a non moment in time, literally just a possible look can cause that. So I like to call those artifacts. Mm -hmm. It's like an archeological dig, Mm -hmm. right? And you find a treasure that's beyond imagination, Mm -hmm. right? Just under the ground. Anyway, that's totally beside the point. What were we talking about? (laughs) You were talking about this amazing energy and going to some, we need just that little bit of extra energy to just one jewel and then you can clear something on the cheek. And this place, blind frog, blind frog, sorry, that's a tongue twister. Uh, (laughs) There's something about it. You thought maybe it was the water, but now you're thinking there's something about the place. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't find that out till later. So, you know, here's Dwayne telling me this whole story. The top of my head's blown off. I walk back to my daughter who's at our booth and I look like, you know, I'm shell shocked. I I mean, I just, I couldn't even talk. I, this story that he told and they called him on the cell phone and right. The fact that people were healing there was uh, almost secondary for me at that point, because the fact that this is his life, his reality. Right. Also had, after this whole incident happened, his child, his daughter was really, really sick. She had triglycerides in the 13,000s and, you know, was dying in the hospital. This is at the time you were there or when no, you no, first- this is sometime after when he's- the ship. Okay. 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 Now, okay. Gotcha. He's in contact with the ships and after- on, the, on the phone again. <laughs> I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't okay. know. I'm guessing. And working with this general and there, there are bigger things going on here than even I can understand governmental things and lots of things, but I'm not even that I can, but that I can understand. I just, they're beyond me and outside of my understanding. But during this time, um, the daughter became very, very sick and they helped him with this, they, he said they beamed uh, what would be like rife energy into the building, or maybe it might be understood as scalar energy. I'm, I'm not sure, but he said the word rife energy 
into the hospital. And they said they were shocked that everybody didn't walk out. Maybe they did. And then he said boots on the ground that also came in to the hospital and worked with her and her triglycerides became normal and she's fully healed. And so he said that he, uh, you know, that was a favor and he owed a favor in return. And that favor in return would be to tell the world that there are things that we don't know about that are available for our healing, that there's more than what is available in the hospitals and all that kind of thing. What, what I see in my work is I, I share a path um, toward awakening the fact that we are already enlightened, we're already connected to this amazing energy. We can all experience these miracles. So that, I, I like the message because it seems like this sounds like it fits. You know, and I, I haven't seen the spaceships that you're talking about and I haven't been to Blind Frog Ranch, but I can totally see, I, I, I also see people who experience these miracles of complete remission and healing yeah. and feeling the experience of this energy. It is ex- available for all of us. I agree. Yeah. And that's what he wanted people to know. And and they wanted people to know. And I don't know if it has to do with um, mechanics or things that they have available that we don't or any of that, but they they wanted people to know this is available and possible. Okay. So I really thought I'd never see Dwayne again. It's 15 hours from where I live. It just, yeah, you know, I mean, Good idea. He also said this to me. If you don't get your ass there, that's on you. And 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 he said it to me very directly. I'm like, Dwayne, Dwayne yeah. said that. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's so- he's direct. He's down to earth. Yeah. <laughs> right? <coughs> well, <Okay. laughs> uh, yeah. A couple months passed. <laughs> a couple months passed, and my husband's uncle died. He was, you know, quite elderly, and they decided to have his memorial service in his hometown near John Day, Oregon, which happens to be six hours east, and Blind Frog Ranch is fifteen hours east. Yeah, halfway there, almost. <laughs> so I come up with this brilliant idea, I'm like, hey, uh, why don't we just head over to Blind Frog and? My husband, who's always like, ah, th- how okay, we can't, and well, that's not, you know, <laughs> he's like, okay. <laughs> I love it. Who are you? Yeah. Have you done with my husband? But okay. So we don't ha- always have had this dream of traveling the, the U.S. because I tra- go to Europe a lot, but never been anywhere much in the U.S., few places. So I said, oh, this is our opportunity, you know, to see a different part of the land. And it's in Utah on the border. And so we go. The other part of this, and I think another reason that he was very willing is I have a a genetic lung disease. And for the past 19 years, I'm, I, I struggle with it for lack of a better term. Most of the time I'm great. Yeah. But it's always there. And I have to always work. I use, you know, cognitive movement and natural medicine and all kinds of things, but it's always there. And the possibility of it's a, a degenerative thing. It's always there. So right before I, you know, between the time I went to the UFO thing and, and then you know, just a couple months, all of a sudden I'm in a really bad way. My liver was starting to shut down. Um, I wasn't breathing. I was breathing very, very, it was bad news. So I think my husband was like, Oh, good idea. Let's Mm -hmm. go there, you know? And so there's this possibility, right. Of, of healing maybe in a profound way. And so I, as I've shared with you off camera, I'm really a skeptic about everything, right? but I totally believe in everything. And I really did believe that Dwayne at least was very certain that something was happening there. So Bill brought the equipment. He had the bio well actually belongs to him. He owns it, but we use it in our work and at our seminar right. about that. And so I'm familiar with it. Um, I also interfere with electronics terribly, which actually plays into the story. Um, so it's not good for me to actually <laughs> use the machine. Got it. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> so, you know, Bill has it. He flies in, which is very odd to me. The very the last minute, he just happened to be 
um, at, at the Gaia studios, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but he ended up coming too. And we're on this expedition and we're going to camp at Blind Frog Ranch. And there's nothing. There's a couple of porta potties there that are, I think the film crew has brought in for when they do the documentary. Right. So there's, there's nothing. It's a hole in the ground. And so we go and we set up this experiment. Now they were a uh, putting together a store in Vernal. Vernal's the really the closest town. It's about 40 minutes from Blind Frog. And they were setting up like an outpost for them and for the Bigfoot expedition. There's a another Discovery Channel show called Expedition Bigfoot, I think that's what it's called. And they're there too. And so people can get information and they were going to set up tours, but at that time it was just being put together. So we used that as a base and 13 people were there, including Dwayne's family, his grandkids and, and son and daughter-in-law, Charlie, who's on the show, Dwayne, Dwayne's girlfriend, um, myself, Bill, and another man who was just visiting the ranch, but who also does a lot of energy work and stuff like that, familiar with the whole thing. So my idea is we need to measure off the ranch. We need to know, is this about the, the zone? What's the difference? So these are people from three to 70. And we do these measurements, a base measurement. Well, the first thing we noticed was the measurements were in the high 60s, nor right off the bat, which is a, higher than normal. Even before you'd really gotten onto the property. Even before, not crazy, but a, <clears throat> a little <throat> higher than <throat> normal. And if it had been one <throat> or two of us, that would have been interesting. Yeah. But 13 over such a wide range. This is in Vernal. You're saying this is in the camp. Vernal. Okay. With the lowest number being the three year old at 55. That was the lowest number. Wow. We're talking okay. about output of joules in joules. I think it's times 10,000 or time, something like that. Anyway, so we do that. Then we get up on the up to Vernal and up to Blind Frog. And my idea was we need to measure before anybody touches feet in that water, which turned out to be really smart. And we only measured people who had never been there before. Okay. So four of us just getting on the land. We jumped about 10 to 14 jewels. Wow. Okay. That's huge. huge. Right. You know, if your jewels are 50, what is that? 20% right there. Isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's so, a huge amount. I yeah. don't math that well. So, <laughs> well, it's, it's a big increase. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. this big jump, right? So, um, that was interesting. Now we know, wait a minute, this isn't just water. This is land. This is the place. So we do that. The next, everybody gets in the water to varying degrees. So some people just put their feet in. Some people got all the way in like me. I got up to about here, right about here. My husband dove in. So different degrees and different times. I spent about 20 minutes. And the reason I got out at 20 minutes was I started getting these tiny, tiny zaps all over my body. And I thought I was being stung by something in the water. Oh my it gosh. It hurt. It wasn't. And, yeah, just. And so the uh, Dwayne's daughter in law says, Oh, I think there's little bugs in the water. Ew. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, can... I, realized I knew it couldn't have been that because it was literally everywhere, all right. up and down my upper torso. So I'm like kind of screaming ah, 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 and getting out. And as I got out, the water that was trapped in my bathing suit, you know how a bathing suit will kind of hold water in? Yeah. Every year that I bent or moved zapped me. So we realized it was, it was an electrical shock. You said there's gold flakes in the water. There's, okay, there's some conductivity there. So, yeah. Everywhere. Just, and it lasted about five minutes after everywhere I moved. I'm like, ah, 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 you know? They all think I'm crazy because no one had ever reported this before. No one. Here's the other thing. The water, when you put your hands out, it's like it, they float. So if you've ever been in the Mediterranean or somewhere very, very salt water. You kind Salty. Of feel, yeah. This water is not salt water. It's fresh water, but there's a resistance. It kind of pushes back at your hands. Ah, 
Like that's interesting. And no one swims, not even the children. I started to watch, they played around the water. They dive in and get out, but no one swims. You don't have the desire to swim or move really at all. There's something, there's another, there's a state of water, you know, there's solid, liquid, gaseous, and there's a fourth state of water, which is, there's a YouTube video about it, a professor up in Washington state, he talks about it, he calls it easy water, where if you meditate, pray, or do other things to the water, and you'll find our body is made of easy water, so it's like, it's in that, this is our natural healing state, and so if you drink something like fresh squeezed juices, fruits, and so forth, that's easy water, it's got that structure to it. And it sounds to me, could be, this water might be easy water where it's already lined up and it has that resistance you're talking about. That's an extraordinary state to find that large a body of water. And I don't know how big the body is that you're talking about, but I'm really interested in this. So, you know, if I had to guess, it's maybe 12, maybe 15 at the widest and maybe 20 at the longest, like it's small. It's very 12 by 20 feet. Okay. So it's a, it's like, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's not, it's not hot. It's not like a hot pool. It's not like that. No, no, no. No. In fact, it's pretty cold, but if you stand there and Dwayne had said this, you know, when I met him the first time that people will get in in the winter time and it's very, very cold there. And the, that electromagnetic charge seems to surround them. If you don't move, they, you get this warm barrier around That's what. You. Again, it's sounding like this easy water. I've never heard of a body of water like this big that's like got that quality. That's extraordinary. Gosh, we'll have to, maybe you can help with that. We'll have to explain that to Dwayne. I mean, because that's more information. So to yeah. all of this is really just some data. Just okay. to out. I mean, it was just an experiment to think, to see what in the world could be happening. And in our paradigm, it's about extra energy equals healing. So that's all we were really trying to figure out. So I get, start getting zapped, right? That was a weird sensation. But Charlie said, you know, maybe it was ions coming out of your body. You know, maybe that's what that was about. But the more I think about it and the more times it happened, I know it, I think I was being electrically charged, zapped. Um, and I have a funny electrical system. I really interfere with electronics. Never right. been able to wear a watch. I can't even really have a, a battery powered <laughs> watch all drain batteries if they're on my body. Right. So I have a funny electrical system, always have. When we came home from there, we brought water with us and we put some of it, I thought I had one, in these little vials like this. Good. And this has it in it. And we dropped them in uh, plastic bottles of water and left them there just to see what would happen. And after being left in for two days, if I drank the water, it would shock me like having a battery on my tongue. You ever done that when you were a kid? You know, you put a battery mm-hmm. in. It. There's that zap. And there's also a little bit of a coppery taste that maybe not for you, but for me. And so that's what mm-hmm. happened. It would zap, zap me. So that's a glass bottle you're holding. Or is that plastic or glass? Mm-hmm. Glass. Okay. And it's that nice, beautiful, um, dark cobalt yeah, blue. Cobalt. Yeah. That's my favorite. So. But that's what we did. We did some other experiments too, but for about 10 days after we came home, that water appeared to hold some kind of a charge. Other people would not get the shock in their mouth, but could tell, like if you have a regular bottle and the bottle that was charged with that, and you could tell there was something else. It had an electric sensation to people. So Then we measured when we, that same day, different states of people being in the water, we remeasured with the bio machine. Now we're seeing numbers in the high seventies, low eighties, a massive jump. Now we're seeing numbers that Bill and I personally had never seen anyone hit before. Right. And you know, not being full experts in the bio well machine, you know, now we're curious, uh, is this out of a range of normal? But we're also seeing that, you know, you're having 30 joules or more of extra energy. Right. Also, so I'm just a really, I mean, because of my background, a big observer of people and body language. And I noticed that there's four little kids, there, siblings. 
Now, if you've been ever been around four siblings, they squabble. Mm-hmm. They fight. <laughs> Yeah. And when we had seen them in the store before, the littlest one, you know, just a toddler, three, she was grouchy, kind of fussing at parents, fussing at siblings, you know. They're on the, when we were up on the mountain, they hadn't eaten or anything. We were just there. Now everybody's just getting along so sweetly. I never saw a parent have to snip at somebody. I never saw kids arguing. It was very interesting the conversations were very kind between everyone, 13 varied people, some people who didn't know each other, all ranges. The conversations were low. Mm-hmm. Everyone seemed to speak about this about this level. Yeah, that was interesting, which is really weird because my husband's really loud and his voice was even at this. So there was something else. So what I found, I had interviewed everybody beforehand and I asked, you know, a series of questions that are really about their nervous system. And, and, and when they all add up to me, I can see about where their nervous system is, is normally on a normal everyday basis. Mm -hmm. The people who spend time there all describe themselves as very happy people. People don't describe themselves as happy, highly focused highly energized, highly, highly, highly off the charts creative. And I had to really push for this one just to see about relationships. And they all said they they had to really struggle to find one that wasn't pretty good. That's unusual for people. So the other thing I said this before, we know that when there's a big jump in voltage or energy, consciousness shifts I'm like ah we're seeing that in real time right with this large group of people that are describing themselves in a higher consciousness level they're literally vibrating at a higher rate above the drama above that emotional junk that so many relationships suffer from yeah yeah weird There was just also this sweetness that comes over people. Now I've been there twice with different groups of people. And after about two hours, that's what you notice. And the second time we went, interestingly enough, the numbers were not as high, but went way, way lower, actually much lower in general. But when you get on the ranch there, there's about a 21 point jump. Both times. You saw that both times. Not Yeah. Not in everyone. But okay. in a few, a few of us, 21 plus uh, points, other people still 10 to 14, 15 in two hours of just standing around doing nothing. And then they start to say, I love this group of people. I'm just so honored to be here with this group of people. It, these are amazing people. And I just can't believe I'm here. And I just feel so happy. And there's no high. I, d- I just want to make it clear. There's no euphoria there. It's not methane gas. I've experienced that once. Since okay. this- <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you, did. you know, no where the- trickery. <laughs> you know where the Sybils, do you ever hear those stories of the Sybils? Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. I've actually been to one of those places and boy, is it true. You start to think I could live here. This is fantastic. The oracles. Yeah. The oracles. Yeah. Yeah. So I've actually had that experience. So I can tell you it was not that. Okay, good. In fact, when we went on the property in the first place, my husband said to me after we've been there for a while, he said, do you feel anything? Does this feel like something to you? And I said, no, it doesn't. So it's not something conscious that you're aware of. And the change does happen on the land. Can't just be explained by easy water that you meditate on. And mm-hmm. it's much bigger, bigger than that. There's something bigger going on. Yeah. And yeah. apparently, you know what? That energy might be creating that, that kind of plasma, fourth state of water, easy water. I don't know. Right? Mean? <laughs> just the energy, the energy on, on the oh. blind, frog, blind frog grants branch might be doing that. Because usually easy water it's like it's our blood has that characteristic to it it's like plasma it's not really water water it's got that pushback you're talking about but this pond has that so i'm thinking maybe the energy of the place has done that to the water i don't know how did that water get in there did they didn't fill it it came from below from a natural 
Like the caves are flooded underneath. Okay. And they believe they're intentionally flooded, by the way. Ah, interesting. Okay. Yeah. There, and there's a lot more to that, though. There's just a lot more to that water and, you know, mm. uh, government things and interference and, you know, just, okay. there's a lot to that specifically. But that's an interesting thing because what we did this last time is we took six or eight bottles of bottled water and just just uh, suspended them in the in the pond for three days okay to see if we could charge the bottles of water and it appeared that they did get charged so that was interesting yeah um so it'd be interesting to, to see if they would charge not in the <laughs> in, the, in the water, right? That would be a really right. interesting experience. So Bill actually took the water and about three day, three or four days after he got home, he just held it in one hand and measured himself and got about a six or eight point jump at different times. So voltage change, though so there is something about the water. And maybe you're right that it just, that water is charged because of the land. It could be, which is amazing right there. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. so, some, <laughs> yeah. So I told you this, I'd be jumping all over in this story because there's so many things. So um, I, I really wanted to stay the night there because I'm thinking, I want to see these ships and I want to see if they call me on my cell phone, right? <laughs> so we stayed the night and about nine o'clock, we were all going to stay up in Skywatch. And all three of it was, was me, my husband and Bill. All of a sudden, we became so tired this feeling of i just need to close my eyes i just can't stay up any longer which was odd as well we all went to bed and our tent is open at the top for sky watching so i'm laying there and i'm trying to keep my eyes open maybe i'll say something and all of a sudden above my head in the sky i saw you know what a spade looks like right an upside down heart uh -huh. I saw a flash. It was instantaneous. That was like four spades like this with an empty space in the middle. And, went, and I thought, what did, I mean, was that a, I mean, I really thought it was maybe a shooting star, but they don't look like that. And I realized like, you know, you've got your dots of stars and this was, would have been massive over those stars. So that's all I saw. But it was really impressive and interesting. I've never seen anything like it before and, and obviously never after. Oh, that's cool. We did see that. In did anyone end, else, just you saw it or anyone else? Seen, I was the only okay. one yeah. with my eyes open to see it. You know, and it was directly <laughs> above the tent where I was looking, not over here, not over there, but right there. Like it saw you. It knew you were there. Like, yeah. here I am. <laughs> Maybe I'd like to think that, right? So that happened. The next morning we got it very early. We measured again and my numbers were in the, in 86, I think bill was 90 or 91. Scott was, my husband was at 80. Like these are numbers you never see. And when we did ask a, a there's a, a gal named Tiffany Barsati and she's one of the world experts in, in, in trainers in the bio wall machine. It sounded like she had seen one other place where they got those numbers and it was this very spe specific place in India. Yeah, I was going to ask about that if anyone has ever seen anything like this. Yeah, so she's been doing that. She, her doctoral thesis is on that. She's been going around the world measuring these places and it sounded like, and this is third-hand information. Bill spoke with her, I didn't, but okay. there's a spot where there's a rock, not a zone, but a rock in India that if you touch it and she said they, she saw measurements of in that range. Okay. So these numbers are extraordinary, you know, extraordinary, extra normal numbers. Mm -hmm. Now imagine if normally you're at 50, 55, and now you're at 90, I think some things are going to change. Yes. However, your body utilizes that energy to the best of its ability to make the changes it can while you're in that energy. Right. So when we went off the mountain, we, num we measured again. Right. And we were back down in the 67s, which was still high. Still high. You but had to benefit. You don't have that energy. Now, here's something very interesting. At Blind Frog, I mean, at Blind Frog and uh, Skinwalker, which is very close. At Skinwalker, people end up with radiation burns. 
that's oh. on the brain. That's not good. The, um, things that happen there that they people see and all of that are negative in nature. Right. Lots of things have been seen at, at Blind Frog. Uh, creatures of all kinds, other experiences, most of them are quite positive in nature. There was one Duane told me about that was really weird and off, but it, it wasn't necessarily negative, just odd. Okay. So in general, they seem to be more positive. So it appears that the energy that is being admitted now, now we've probably forgotten by now their lightning came out of the ground there and a blue orb and <laughs> Wait, how big was that? Did he describe the size of the blue orb and the lightning? No, he, you know, he said it was huge up out of the ground, but the place big, that big, we're bigger talking, than like big as a bus, big as a, bigger than a, you know, like an airplane or yeah, car. you know, I don't know if he told me that. Okay, it sounded big, right? <laughs> okay, but if you can see the place, it's not huge. I mean, maybe this whole area that he's talking about is also a place where they were digging clearly and. I don't know, maybe it's 50 feet around, maybe less than that, maybe 30. It's not huge. So something the size of a car or around that size might, might have been what, who knows? We're just guessing. Yeah, yeah like that. Yeah. And he said also that they have seen craft come down to that place, almost look like they go in and come back out. So they sus- suspect maybe it's a fueling station, a charging station. Energy, ah. energy right? But the energy there seems to be very bioavailable to bodies. Mm-hmm. Bodies like it. So when we measured, the biowell machine can also show you where energy is going in the body. Right. Like which, where energy is moving. And in my case, it was off the charts, lungs and liver. Ah, nice. Energy. Right where you would, right where you needed it. Right. So is the energy intelligent or is the body intelligent in using the energy that way? Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe both. So we saw that uh, you can kind of see everybody has their general ailments. What you know, the thing that generally is wrong with their body, and with that, you could see that was where the energy was going for everybody. Nice. So I told you that I arrived there in this really bad state. Right. And over the days I was there, you know, it got a little better and a little better, but you know, no miracle cure. This is the first time you were there? First, the first time I was there. But on the way home, I mean, let's say I went out of a, in a 10 out of a 10 problem state. Maybe I was down to a three out of a 10 in, in problem state, right? Good. That's very good. Not so bad, right? I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> but not a miracle cure. Then the, our drive home is 15 hours. About five hours in, all of a sudden... I don't even realize it, but I'm breathing normally, like normally pre 19 years ago. Right. Right. Normally. And my husband is looking at me like, am I dead? Because he's used to hearing me breathe Mm -hmm. normal. You know, after five hours, I sort of forgot that I ever had a problem and I'm, you know, bopping about when we stop at rest stops and going here, going there and no shortness of breath, no, you know, my heart's behaving normally and wow. Right. So this might be way too much information, but a huge mass actually moved out of the back of my sinus. And for a minute it blocked my airway. That's how big it was. Whoa. And it had been an issue for a while and it, it, it was, it moved, it was gone. But when I got back to my hometown, I could feel the shift and energy. I could feel that symptoms start to creep back, you know, maybe 25%, but still. Mm-hmm. So my theory, and I'm no scientist, not even a doctor, mm-hmm. play one on TV, any of that is that the body is utilizing the energy that it has available to create the healing that it can. Yes. You know, if I stayed there a month, is it possible that my body would reconstruct itself? Maybe. Who knows? Good. It sounds like it's going the right direction. Maybe, but what it showed me was the possibility that my body can can behave absolutely normally, right? Without any symptomology, which means that's possible. It's in your range. It's brought it within reach. Yeah, so it's in your it's in your grasp. You can within get the it. realm of all things possible, it's possible. So, 
Um, I wanted I wanted to share with you specifically a couple of odd time uh, timeline things that happened. Okay. One, we're so we ran a, tr- a cargo trailer doing this measurement with a generator because there's nothing up there. We got the generator plugged into the machine. Nothing's up there now. You were talking about special metal. Yes. Right. With the what did you call those? The well, meteorite. Oh, tinctures. Yeah, the tinctures. Tinctures. They contain several. It's a fusion of many different special metals. It's very sacred, and part of it is meteorite. Okay. Celestial metal. Okay. So evidently, you know, you've heard of the philosopher's stone and alchemy and all of that. So evidently, in certain spots, energy spots around the world, any dirt can be turned into metal. And this particular kind of metal, I don't remember the name, what they called it, actually is found in Rome now from ancient Roman times. So it's not copper or gold or anything, but it's an, an, what do you call it, as an alloy or uh, it's an amalgamation of all these. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, there is this strange blue dirt that happens on the land there. That's a whole nother part of the story. When they dug in this place where the lightning came out, the dirt was blue. So they used a crucible and they showed this on the documentary uh, um, and they heated it up to that about 1800 degrees and the dirt turned to metal. Hmm. Now, Dwayne said that people have since then brought dirt from all over the world, including a bag of sand from the Grange. And they heat it up when they're over that zone where the lightning came out, it turns to metal. Wow. Wow. And they wear these metal medallions around their necks, the, the people that live there, or that they don't live there, but that are Dwayne and the crew wear them. They, and they hold special properties. Well, they had made one that's about this big, a, a pyramid about that big. And they covered it in crystals that came from another property in New Mexico that are also charged in that zone. So you've got, you've got this thing. And that's sitting on the table next to me because Dwayne wanted to measure to see if people, if the energy looked different. Right. And it didn't. It really didn't. But it was sitting there. You've got this thing, right? That's stored over that energy spot. So I'm there and I'm very distracted because I'm doing the thing with the machine and I have a problem with the computers and the thing. So I'm really trying to. You know, and stay, the, gr- stay grounded. If you're yeah, grounded, it helps. Yeah. yeah. And the people are coming and they're putting their fingers in and people are chatting and talking and uh, somebody's back was out and I'm kind of guiding them through a little cognosis. <laughs> you can imagine I'm all over the place. So Dwayne's girlfriend, her name is Mary Lee and, and she's this lovely, lovely uh, Texan woman. And she's standing there and, and, and two of Dwayne's other family members, and we're all kind of chatting at this point, this is the second time I'm there. It's in the evening. People are drinking beers and stuff, which they're not supposed to do when you're testing energy. Cause it really does affect the machine. Yeah. They're having a great time. Right. And we'd done our, our initial testing. And so everybody's, you can imagine, here's this hole in this cargo trailer and I'm in the dark, you know, doing the thing. And they're all standing out and around. And Mary Lee leans in and says to me, hey, Liz, did Dwayne tell you that he's going to take you this evening to see where, see the blue orbs, where they come out of the ground? They're still doing that occasionally. Oh, wow. Well, sometimes. Hold on now. So here's where the, the reality shift comes. So I'm like, no, he didn't tell me that. Do not withhold information. I'm, you know, we're joking. And I go back to chatting. When I, when I think about it, I realized that no one else reacted to that comment. No one said anything. Right. But at the time, it, there was so much commotion, I didn't think about it. Right. So probably an hour and a an hour and a half passes and I'm doing all the things. And finally I come out of the hole and I say to Mary Lee, I said, Mary Lee, what were you talking about? Dwayne. And I realized that she said, Dwayne's going to show you. Right. I, I heard that, I'm, you know, with neuro-linguistic programming, I'm hearing how things are said and all of that. So you, I thought, so I said to her, you know, what were you talking about? Because 
my understanding is the orbs aren't coming out of the ground all the time. Yeah, and this is new information. On command. I, I hooked right onto that too. Like the, this is an ongoing thing. <laughs> yeah, I latched right onto that. Woo. Yeah, 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 right? I mean, right, obviously. yeah. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> and she said, I never said that. <laughs> I'm like, Mary Lee, do not like, don't tease me like that. Like, <laughs> she's like, I never said that. And also that's not how that works. Yeah. That's totally a, a very clear example of a reality shift. I've got examples like that in my book, reality shifts, um, not about spaceships or orbs coming out of the earth, but same exact idea. Side by side with my daughter, we're, we're at Disneyland and she told me, I heard, mom, I have to use the bathroom. And then I said, so I start looking for bathrooms, which was no easy feat back then and found one. I said, okay, I found one. And she said, what are you talking about? Uh, but she did need to use the bathroom. She said, I never said anything. So um, yeah, well, this is, this does happen. It's an ongoing, it's not, it's very much part of the reality shift phenomenon. So very cool. And you're more likely to get reality shifts when your energy is running higher. So, yeah. So I, um, I know she was telling me the truth. I know she wasn't teasing me and I could see all over her that in her reality that had not happened. So I kind of let it go. I didn't think much more about it, but that night it was in the evening. Everybody's there having a great time. All of a sudden my body went into what we call neurological overload in my work. So what it would look like to someone else's that the body's starting to go into shock a little bit. Right. Want to get a bit of cold sweat. You know, there's a, a, a jittery or a shakiness in the body. Um, the mind starts to not quite be online. Right. So in our work, we know we've done our job when that happens because the, the nervous system has let go of something and needs to reset. So we have tools that we very quickly reset the nervous system but I just started to not feel well. And I recognized it as neurological overload and we left. So in the second trip, when we were there, when we were on our way there, we, we were going for a very specific reason mm -hmm. and everything was lined up for that reason. And it created urgency for getting there. We needed to be there because things were happening that needed, we needed to be present for we right. at our work. It was pretty exciting. And I'm like, this is exciting. Is this really happening? Because it actually <laughs> meant for me that I was like one degree away from like a lifetime goal. It wasn't quite it, but it was very adjacent. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like so cool. We get there. And all of a sudden the timeline went, phew, everything went into chaos. And we could see that in the numbers recorded on the machine. None of that lined up. None of it happened. In fact, things went so sideways and so was so chaotic that it was actually almost the opposite. Right. Very weird. And so, you know, when I got home, I started to think about the strange timeline jumps. We met a man at the, uh, at an event there who actually is studying the whole basin. They're putting sensors on people and on places. And then I think there's some satellite component as well. I don't know who's paying for this, but it's a big study where people will have this paranormal phenomenon. Right. They see ghosts, they hear noise, they lights, everybody's seen a UFO, like everybody that's common. Mm -hmm. So when somebody will, one report that they've had a phenomenon, the sensors will also sense whatever else is going on. Okay. And they can see it move through the basin, like a wave. And Dwayne said to me, when we noticed that the numbers were very low, like 42 is where we measured Dwayne and my husband and myself. Right. Um, I tend to measure much higher that Dwayne measures much higher that my husband, we've never measured that much, but much lower than the time before we've never been in the forties. Right. That's low. I mean, you're in a, a health crisis at that point that was yeah. on the land on blind frog ranch. 
That's weird. It was weird. Also, the first time we went, it was a full moon. The next time we went, it was a new moon. I was going to ask about the moons because, you know, the thing that I haven't said, but I keep thinking it now, I'm going to say it, morphogenic fields, Rupert Sheldrake, that's the way he got into morphogenic fields and studying uh, these energies around things that are intelligent and create because he was researching plants, I think in India and observing um, that the one thing, like Western scientists will do all these measurements, all this research. Do they pay attention to the cycles of the moon? Largely no, but that's everything to the plant life. Okay. So I was going to, I was going to ask you, like, are you paying attention to the lunar cycles? Okay, cool. Yeah. Because it was so noticeable the first time. Oh my gosh, it's a full moon and we're here and we're having this amazing experience Yes. And then now, I mean, the moon couldn't have been more of a sliver, you know, okay. the second time. Right. The energy was low, but like I said, within a very short time, boom, we jumped up 21 points, 20 points, 18 points. So, right? so how, how long was that for that low energy period? It was a short moment or, um, you know, I don't know. I can't say that because we just measured one time. Was it a few minutes, a few hours? Yeah. A day? When we got there. So when we got to the land, it was, uh, we were there maybe 20 minutes by the time we set up. Okay. So that first reading in 20 minutes was low. That was the forties. Yeah. We, and we'd measured the night before as well. And, and this, um, some of the same people that we'd measured before and now some new people, still okay. a large group, eight or 10 people. And those numbers were low, but in the 50s, right. normal okay. numbers, normal. And then you said when they came back up, was that days later, hours later? No, uh, mi- an hour minute okay we so it's just like a, like this weird little this weird time at the beginning but then it didn't last small blip yes and no so we were in the 40s now remember before we ended in the 90s yes the highest well, that was before but in in this moment that we jumped 20 points but we still only ended up in the mid 60s which is high for normal but not compared yeah so we never ended up measuring above that you know high 60s for that particular trip but what was interesting you know we're just measuring bodies and the electricity of the land through the bodies but you could see it everything was chaos things fell apart it it was very chaotic yes But when the people were on the land, the group, within an hour, 90 minutes of being there, people were having a great time. They were sharing, like I said, the one person was like, I just feel so happy and honored to be here. And this is incredible. And I just feel so happy. Right. So the effect of the land was still there. Now, I did get in the pond. And I did get the electrical charge that I got the last time, the zap, but very, very let little pop, 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 pop here and there, not everywhere, <laughs> just a little, very little still nobody else did, but, I, but I did, I could feel it, but just a little. And after only after being in about 20 minutes. So um, Dwayne said it actually proved something that he'd been told back to the general, back to the, you know, the, the Federation, that the energy is always there, but it fluctuates. Right. Fluctuates. He didn't know why or how or what. So a couple of things, the moon cycle, that's one, that's a possibility, but also a different group of people were there right? as well. Cause, so that could have something to do with it. There was an event happening in the town. Ah, right. There was a little bit of chaos and not bad chaos, but their store was opening and the tours were going to happen. Right. People were going to start coming on the land in larger groups. So we don't know. We don't know what, how that fits in. And also there's the larger Uinta Basin that is considered a cursed land by the Zuni and the Hopi people. So... I mean, there's all of that. When you say cursed, do you, what do you mean by, because when you talk about a curse, you talk about the Hopi and the Zuni, um, you know, they, I don't usually hear those words associated with their uh, language. So it's I interesting. Think that's maybe not the correct word. It's just the word that I've heard. So 
um, because they, the word skinwalker came from them. The, in the in the area around this, and also in uh, the ranches and farms in the um, there's there's a little bit of Wyoming there. There's Colorado, right? Other people have experienced very similar things that have been experienced on Skinwalker Ranch, which tend to be slightly negative in nature. So cryptids tend to be there that are described by the Zuni and the Hopi as skinwalkers. So a negative thing. Um, you know, Bigfoot has been seen there. Things that look like mm-hmm. were- werewolves have been seen there. There's lots of reports. So I met a woman who also uh, grew up on a, a Colorado ranch in the in the area, same area, um, where these black boxes show up. Hmm. Um, they're they're just a black box. They look physical, and beings come out of them. Hmm. So some people report actually touching them and being you know blown backwards by the energy or getting radiation burns, things like that. So all kinds of phenomenon of every kind, ghosts, everything. Um, But they don't tend to sound really positive. But at Blind Frog, they are. So what's that phenomenon? Who, you know, who knows? I'll share another uh, strange um, reality shift that started to happen to me during that time. Yes. Yes. So one of, another one was, um, I would see written words okay so one of them for example was um uh, pecan pralines right pecan pralines my husband are looking at snacks you know we're getting ready to get back on the road and go and i said the pralines right there and i'm looking at them seeing the word praline double checking because this had happened to me before so i'm like (laughs) he's like honey i'm sorry i just don't see pralines I'm like, it's right there. The minute I touched it, it said pecan pieces. Right. Yeah. I've seen stuff like that happen real time too, yeah. where I'm, I'm actually touching or holding something. And I've heard of other people having reports. Um, my daughter once mentioned she'd been to a bookstore, gathered a whole stack of books that she really loved. She thought, I want to, I want to read these. These are interesting. Got to the checkout counter and then she looked at the titles and none of them, she was so freaked out. None of them or anything she would want to read, nor were they what she had picked out. Yeah. And she was, she was so shocked. She just left the store. Like, ah. yeah, that's, it's weird when that happens. Yeah. We were going to interview a gal who's Turkish and she has an unusual name. It's E S R A. That's what it is now. So they sent me the book. I was in contact with her publicist. Mm-hmm. I had seen her name written many times many times, 20 times. It's like Ezra, but with an S. Yeah. Yeah. We get the book and it was easy RA, right? Easy RA. (laughs) No. And I I was thinking that's interesting. And then, and then the title of the book is money. I got to look because I'll get it wrong. Money does grow on trees, but it was money really does grow on trees. So it used to be a different title and a different author. In my reality, in their reality, no, it's never been that. And Oh, of course. It's like the Bernstein Bears. Yeah. But I would have said, oh, it's just me. I just put that in there. But I'm telling you, I saw it no less than 20 times. Right. But the day we were on the interview, I couldn't, she kept telling me I was spelling her name wrong and I couldn't figure out what she was talking about. Right. And, you know, it was a Z, an S instead of a Z. And I'm like, am I really losing my mind? But that particular thing during that month period where we were back and forth from Utah happened again and again, where I couldn't trust myself to see what I was actually reading. Yeah. Signs and books and all of that. Yeah. I I get those all the time. And I'm sure it's because I mostly work with clients on directly connecting to divine source. And that's that flow. That's that gush of energy. And I'm in it all the time. So I'm constantly experiencing it. So I'm like a huge frequent experiencer but i also get why people tell me cynthia i can't believe that or or yeah. i get comment i get comments on my youtube videos like this th- th- those if they're polite i'll keep the comment it's okay to be respectful and say like i can't believe that's going to happen and i get it because they're if they took that bio well machine that you and bill are working with they probably get numbers in the 40s or low 50s and of course they're not going to experience this stuff 
of course they're not. Well, so that's why, I mean, I think that's why I met Dwayne in such that, a, a weird way, you know, if <laughs> not, you know, Bill hadn't been bugging me about whatever he was bugging me about. And I, you know, texting me about whatever. And, and if I hadn't been sort of lost and had no idea where I was and cause I would have yeah. chosen, there's a Colorado river there. I would have chosen to go out and sit and look at the beautiful river, not this portico with you know, people, <laughs> right. So I know. all these little straight, why in the world? So I went to this UFO Megacon certain I was going to meet someone. Now I thought it was um, a radio show host that would have been very good for our business that if we had, you know, um, I did meet that person and became quite friendly with them. But immediately I thought, I realized, oh, nope, that's not it. And the last day I'm thinking, well, I don't know why I'm here. Right. What did I come here for? I had met some interesting people, but nothing impactful. Why am I here? I knew I was here for something. And then, you know, walk out that door, happen to have my ball in my hand with the thing in my bra. And, you know, here walks in Dwayne with this amazing amazing story. And if he hadn't told me all of the things, right. I think I would have thought, "Eh, you know, right. (laughs) Right. I'm like you, we've experienced these things. We've have somebody measuring in those lower numbers and jump 10 points during a session. Yes. Walk out the door and their life is literally different. Like their spouse calls, right. You know, Oh yeah. Relationships are healed. I mean, you know, uh, somebody calls and wants to buy their house like right now, instantly change. Right. And we've seen it and it appears, cause again, I'm not a scientist, but it appears that that jump in energy is at least the catalyst that, yes. that makes that possible. Another explanation in my mind would be that, you, you know, the blinders are off. Right. Perception has changed so greatly that maybe that situation has always been that situation. And now right. you can see it. all the opportunity, what I notice is that all the realities are there. And so, but it's different energy levels and alignments of our own energy. Yeah. We, it's like, we are the key. We are the code. We, we can uh, awaken to this alignment that's within. That's what I love about your work with. And I, I tell so many people about cognitive movement constantly. Like uh, if like, I tell them, if you want to train in a protocol, you want to that learn was, something yeah. as a tool set. Yeah. This yeah. is something you can do. Cause I work, I, my, my thing is working mostly with people one-on-one and really for them to feel the, the faith and the, the connection that's possible. Um, usually they can't get that unless they're with someone who has it. So yeah. then I can be the guide and then they learn to kind of lock in there and, and then to keep that alignment, that's the other trick. And that's why cognitive movement tools like that are so important because if you, if you, when you do fall off balance, then you can get the chaos we're describing It's the low energy. Also, when you combine that with, with Mac lack of alignment, Oh my gosh. (laughs) We, I mean, in my mind, especially that those patterns that are running, like, like the girl giving you the, you know, the shoulder, that huge program that's gobbling energy is the way I see it. It's, it's utilizing a lot of those jewels to right. run that particular nervous system program. The minute that no longer is running, that energy's back. And now it's like being at blind frog for at least for a while. Yeah. And people may wonder, well, why would anyone do that system? But people do get, um, these are habitual patterns. It's like you, like learning to fish a certain way or learning to do anything. We learn it from our parents. You know, people learn, know that they, their thoughts about money come often from early childhood and so mm-hmm. forth. These patterns are also kind of locked in early, but they can be cleared. It's well, so they powerful. Can be cleared instantly. I mean, that's like our work. And we do it through the physical body and the feeling, not the logical mind. We just don't engage with the logical mind. It's like, engaging with the toddler or a terrorist, but we yes. go through that feeling because a lot of times you're exactly right. All the things, you know, are an issue. Like if you were raised in a certain religion with biases or, right. parents, or maybe you suffered abuse, but then there's these things that are non moments. I tell a story in our book about a popsicle, a girl whose life was ruined over a popsicle. Because uh-huh. she was four. And the offense to her little nervous system of her mother giving her sister a popsicle and not her was so great that her body ran a pattern of, I I can't be loved. I'm not lovable. Right. It was not true, but 
your nervous system has two jobs. I think in my opinion, safe and alive, that's it. Right. And it'll run a fight or flight pattern, which costs a lot of energy. Right. Protecting you from having that kind of an injury again. And in right. case, it was a popsicle, but at four with that particular brain development on that day, blood sugar maybe was involved even, you know, right. That was a massive trauma, a massive injury. Something. The- some, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go. Well, it, this is, it just reminds me of everything you're talking about, like the groups of people at the blind frog ranch matter and in families, constellation therapy is another methodology that people often use to access past life traumas of, of your uncle, your father, and so forth, that we're in a constellation of relationships. And, and then there are also people that work with dousing subtle energy fields and noticing like there's so much going on energetically with the group that you're in. And this is a big field. It's, it's that morphogenic thing again, the, yeah. that Rupert Sheldrake talks about, but we're social animals. We're very connected. So it's the land, it's our community. The people we're with are people in our relationships. It's a big network and i love how you brought all this up today and i I love how you're so open sharing all of this (laughs) it's extraordinary this is it i feel like the experience is you know in the in the vein that duane is offering it share 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 you know tell the world yeah experience and i think that there are you know like you said all the pieces interwove and go ahead i'd i'd love your um just if people are watching this and they're thinking, should I go to Blind Frog Ranch? What would you recommend? Uh, you said tours are getting set up. I'm not, I have no cut on this. I'm not getting money from it or anything, but I'm just. Well, me neither. <laughs> me neither. Actually, no, no, just, no, yeah, no, 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 it was no, no, no funny business here. But I'm just wondering, like, what would you suggest if, if, if someone like myself or someone were going, what would you recommend? Go on a full moon, um, pick the group of people you're going with? Yes. All <laughs> of the above. I would say if it's you, Cynthia, or someone like you, right, has the ability to add to this, to the overall discussion, you know, Let's get a hold of Dwayne and have you go and talk about easy water, experience it. Because like he says, I'm just an old hillbilly and I don't know. The <laughs> more that could be known, I asked him very specifically, Dwayne, what's the mission? I want to know about the mission. Right, right. The overall intention. Yeah, right. I kind of wanted to know, did it match my own? And what yeah. is this about, you know? Right. And the mission is to get the word out there that, that there's more, that, that it's possible. <clears throat> that's part of my, that's, I agree. I'm in alignment with that mission. That's what I'm all about. So good. Yeah. Me too. So, you know, there's this group that is here in some capacity helping with things, you know, they certainly have the capacity to heal his daughter. And I've heard Dwayne tell that story three times now. And he can't tell it without getting extremely emotional. That's so sweet. Yeah. yeah. I watched, you know, as he told the story from the stage and I watched his son who is, you know, the sister, mm-hmm. I watched his face. I watched the emotion well up in the family. This is their true story. It happened to them. They experienced it. And he said, that's what the mission is, you know? So as we shared today, your work, can restore some of that energy to a person to have them experience. Yeah. Connecting with God, with source divinity. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's one way my work does it by right. the nervous system patterns and stopping the body from gobbling energy that way. Right. Returning and restoring your energy raises the consciousness and the perspective. My work does that. Right. The land at blind frog does that without any question in my mind. So there's all these ways that we have the possibility and the availability of changing not only our physical bodies, but our consciousness, our dimension, (laughs) you know, our reality, really. So back to what you were saying, the people. Yeah, I think who was there? So there was an event that happened there. It was a phenomenon was there. It was a much smaller event, also very small attendance. But what I found when I was at the UFO convention and 
what I'm about to say might be really offensive to some people. And if it is, I'm really sorry. I'm just going to share my perspective and what I felt from the people while I was there. Like I said, one of my little superpowers is feeling the real intention, real emotion of the person. Right. In that moment, I can only say in the moment that I meet them, that's what I am able to, to discern. And there's a lot of desperation that goes with those. Who's going to notice me? Will I make the connection that I need to make to further my career? Um, there was a very important person at that event who went completely unnoticed by the event coordinator, you know, was disrespected. Wow. You know, it's, there's a lot of moving parts. So that was what it <clears throat> felt like to see it. You could yeah. see it, the moving, the moving parts of that bit of desperation. So now, you know, here comes to this town on a low moon energy, obviously. Oh. <laughs> right. That it was the first time they did it. The people who were okay. it were trying. It was the city council, I think, you know, the city put it on trying to bring yeah. Yeah. energy and high hopes and then right. Speakers, you know, vying for time and attention and people. And yeah, so there was that. Yeah. Then it, there was a different group that came to the property. All amazing people. I can't say anything negative about that. The film crew was also back. Maybe something was there. But Cynthia, here's what I know. And if there was even one thing I would want anybody to hear and take away from this, and it's a very, very vulnerable thing. Right. I was there. I was there, right? I right. contributed to that energy. And that's, and the, yeah, this is the idea in reality shifting too. We all have subjective realities. Your experience, like you noticed, is not what someone else even heard. So, yeah. And I had an expectation. Right. And as I, so, I mean, I do my cognitive movement work. I do it because I know that, whatever emotion and feeling and idea and perception that I have going on in my body, that's creating a funk, which happens quite occasionally. I know I can extract that feeling right? To free my mind, my nervous system, my consciousness to have a different perspective. And as I was doing my work this morning, it was actually, I knew I was going to have this conversation with you. And I was, I hadn't thought about my expectation going there. I'm like, oh my God, like I'm this close to that thing that might happen. Got it. Okay. It I all see. went sideways. Gotcha. Maybe that was an overreach in my nervous system. Maybe my, my thought of, you know what? It <clears throat> like? Yeah. It felt like that dream. If you ever have a dream where in that dream, you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe I've got the villa in Sicily or it <laughs> happened. Right. And uh-huh. then you wake up. Right. It was like that. And I thought, oh my God, that's another reality shift. I yes. think in some way, at least for myself, my contribution, I shifted that mm-hmm. timeline. So it made me realize, oh, I have a, a pattern running in my nervous system, which is now generating timelines that really are not in my best interest. They're out there. I mean, there are lots of yeah. them out there, but, but you don't have to choose every item on the menu, go no. to every, re- you don't have to go to all the restaurants for one dinner and no. order everything on every menu. No, they're all out there, but, but what I know is does, whatever there's, my... yeah, you're choosing the, you're choosing the one that's right for you based on where you are in that moment. Exactly. Well, maybe not even what was right for me. I, I don't know that I would have chosen that, but what I, in my vernacular, it would be that that was the program. My system was running at the time. That was the most prevalent and I experienced the echo of that one. Now, in another timeline, very nearby to that one, that <laughs> thing might have actually happened. It might have gone into fruition. And yeah, in- they're, yeah, they're all there. I, I, what I see is you're guided by your high self. So even when you feel like it may not be the best for me, I think it, it was. And I think what's happening is things are happening because of that that yeah. never would have happened otherwise. It, it could, you could be 100% right. <laughs> However, what I do know is that I can go back in which I plan to do today. And I'll experience it the way I might've chosen for it to happen, just to feel it, just to see what it feels like to have that timeline and which is possible to do now. Will it change anything? It may or may, it may not, but I think it will um, 
maybe alter my feeling about that moment in time. Because it was, it was disappointing. It was a disappointment. And yet there was so much data. There was so much information. Like you said, there's so much that came out of it. It allowed for filming to stop so we could be on the land longer. Yeah. So we had to quit. You know, right. an event happened that otherwise we wouldn't have been able to have access. To yes. That second time, right? Right. I would never have experienced that sh- reality shift. Exactly. I still don't know what that is about, but there's a gift in this yeah. that may be yes. invisible to you currently. I, I know you're going to find that gift. I know it's there. It's it's there and you can do it maybe through what you're, the process you're describing, going back and getting into a different feeling state could bring it, then it could reveal it. Then you'd be like, Oh, Cynthia, you're right. Oh my God. You know, cause I have a feeling there's something right there in the experience, but it's hidden. It's invisible. Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like, hello, can you see me? Liz, I'm here, Liz. <laughs> Well, and I also think as teachers, I don't know, maybe you've experienced this, maybe you haven't, that we will experience these things because oh, yeah. we will also work to find our way out of them. That's right. Or We're around through them, all of it. through yeah. them. And yep. then we will teach that. Exactly. You know, so I'm aware of that. I don't think I always love it. <laughs> but, but oh, but I love that about you. I love your, uh, your vulnerability. I love your openness. I love your, you. you've got this, you've got this pure heart that just shines through. Oh, thank you so much. I love that <laughs> you too. That's what it feels like. It feels like you always get Cynthia, the authentic version. I love that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, this, this has been so lovely. Um, thank you for sharing it and, yeah. and, and recording it. This is awesome. Cause I think there are going to be a lot of people. I keep getting this flash of my dinner with Andre. Yeah, have you ever seen that movie? It's hilarious. Um, uh-uh. Wallace. Wallace Shawn is describing, he's having his dinner. Uh, I forget which one's Andre, but he's got this, uh, it's just a great movie. I don't want to spoil it. Andre? My Dinner with Andre. And it's just funny because it, you have to keep in mind the time frame when this film came out. It was decades ago. And so he's describing things like, I've been on this spiritual journey and then this happened and that happened. And he's got this very straight-laced friend who's just sort of like, <laughs> and we've all, you know, I think people watching this are going to relate because either they're the ones who are having those amazing experiences and then they try to tell their family, coworkers, and their friends are like, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Blind frog, what? Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like I mean, lightning coming out of the earth, what? <laughs> I know. And, you know, and as I hear myself telling Dwayne's story about the phone call, you can see people like, okay the cell phone really I right? know, there's going to be some point where they're like I can't quite go with can't go there <laughs> and you know I have to say I mean the fact that Dwayne was willing to share his story with me I'm, I'm a virtual stranger in a portico with a ball and a bra and a phone in her bra and and like, he needs to move his vehicle or else you know <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> and telling him you've got to move your your vehicle. Sure. I will. And then he went right back into the story. It was important for him to share with me that story in that moment. And I think what it taught me is again and again, I know this, but I have to be reminded, follow what feels like the right thing to do. Just go. And like, you're saying like the fact that my experience wasn't the way I thought I wanted it to be there's a reason in an, in the higher interest, yes, you know, that it worked out that way to guide me to where I went next, because the fact that Bill and I, and my husband, I think he was in, in very important part of this went yes, and did this research and then put out the video that we did. It'll spur someone else's imagination and idea. And just like yours, yes. maybe it's easy water. To me, that sounds like something I don't know anything about that, but you do. Yeah. And you'll get an opportunity and, and it will blossom from there. It feels important, at least in my paradigm, to share it and to see what happens next. 
Sounds beautiful. I love it. I just love it. Thank you for sharing all of it. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not an easy water expert either by any means. I just know that when you charge it up and you put the intention and you, it's, you, you bring an order to the water. So it becomes that fourth state of water. It's not frozen. It moves like a plasma. It's, it's, but it's like it's been magnetized or something. I can imagine you getting shocks from swimming in something like that. But I've never heard of so much that you could swim in it. So if this is what it is, it's probably happened from the energy, but I don't know, of yeah. the land. And how does how does that happen? I mean, wow! So something amazing is happening. Can it be tested? Do you know that? Can you can you test to see if it's tiki water? Yeah, it- you can type. Um, we can just ch- do a check on YouTube, and there's or let me know. Maybe oh, yeah, I should put these links in when we get this up on YouTube. We'll have a link to the Easy Water video by the professor who's talking about it at the university, and um, it's kind of you might fall asleep to it because it's very technical, but it's cool. Mm-hmm. So nerds will love it. <laughs> and then a link to the video that you did with Bill, which I now need to watch in its entirety. But I wanted to talk to you first and really hear like what prompted you to go to Blind Frog Ranch in the first place. That's- and then they, then they can go and see the measurements and everything. And that's so cool. Yeah, it's it's really actually impressive. I mean, you know, like you said, it might be a little boring to go through, but on the video, if anybody's interested in watching it, we actually go through mine, uh, Bill's and Dwayne's uh, bio well readings. And we actually show mine and Bill's from years past to show where the normals are. Right. Now, he and I do tend to measure a little higher. But than, even so, but it's nothing like blind yeah. frog, right? No, 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 no. I mean, we, <laughs> we, we will sometimes be about 10 points higher But keep in mind that we're constantly doing cognitive movement work where we're freeing up more and more of our energy. That's the point. So it's just as an artifact of the, of the work that we do that we will measure a little bit higher, but even so we still are in the norm for most people. Right. And these numbers were, I call it extra normal. I mean, they are incredible and at least in my mind it proves out what we think what what we suppose that the extra amount of energy the body just uses it to heal and And it matches what yeah i've experienced it too with the spiritual approach that's why i do it that way because it just opens it all up and then suddenly no blockages and and miracles happen but miracles happen yeah but it requires being on to me it requires having that integrity and really being clear uh, with what you're envisioning for yourself and others is of your heart and it's what you truly need and if you don't have that of course you know so well and i want to say this too because you know, I, I shared with you that I'm a complete skeptic about everything. And I believe in everything as well. What I witnessed at Blind Frog Ranch, the result appears like a miracle. And with our work and your work, the result appears like a miracle. Right. However, it's very explainable. Right. The body uses energy to run. It needs certain amount of energy to heal, to think, yes. to and to make a quantum jump, to make a quantum jump, it requires that energy. Yes. And, and to, and to jump consciousness, which I think. Yes. Thing. Yes. We find like, we have a seminar, it's three days called Cogno Conscious. It's, it's so hard when I put it on the schedule. I hate myself for putting it on the schedule because it's so hard, even as a facilitator, but we're clearing, doing this, the Cogno work for three full days straight using the Hawkins scale at the end of it people leave and will all of a sudden have a new psychic ability that they didn't have before. Right. They will all of a sudden activate healing ability. Right. Um, things that you might put in the realm of room, woo woo. But to me, it's actually just the function of having that extra available horsepower electricity. Yes. We, we've all got it. We're all enlightened, but, but we need to awaken it and your process helps awaken it. So, yeah. so, well. so glad for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is so long. We'll, we'll stop recording. Okay. Yes. Yeah, stop recording. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks for the conversation, Cynthia. Oh, thank you, Liz. Always such a pleasure.